Blake's, it was left to Burke to take up George Blake's challenge. George Blake walked up to me in D-Hall and said to me, Sean, I've decided the time has come for me to leave this place. I had been hoping that there might be some chance of an exchange with the Russians or some such thing which might mean my getting out of here earlier. But I now have reason to believe this will not happen. And therefore, I think I must get out of here on my own initiative. I am asking you to help me escape. In Sean Burke, Blake had picked an ingenious man. Burke's master stroke was to smuggle into Wormwood Scrubs a two-way radio. This is Baker Charlie calling Fox Michael. Baker Charlie calling Fox Michael. Can you hear me? Come in, please. On the night of the operation, I will hand you three items. A brown envelope, a piece of paper, and two keys on a ring. In his cell, thanks to poor prison security, Blake could safely plan his escape with Burke, who'd now been released and was speaking to him from the darkness just beyond the prison walls. Uh, yes, all clear so far. Continue, please. When I stop the car, I will name a particular street and a particular house in that street. Unknown to Blake at the time, Burke was recording all these radio conversations. This exchange took place just four days before the planned escape. You will find yourself in a long, narrow passage. Walk down to the end of that passage. You will find yourself in a long, narrow passage. Walk down to the end of that passage, literally to the Burke end... Burke wanted to be able to prove, as he afterwards did, that he really had masterminded this part of the escape. He was gleeful at the prospect of humiliating British authority. I hope that in four days' time it'll be just like the words of the old Irish song. I'll look into your eyes and hold your hand. I'll walk beside you through the golden land. Follow that if you can. Yes, all right. I'm looking very much forward to hearing you sing it very soon directly. Burke was already in touch with his former fellow prisoners, Pat Pottle and Michael Randall. At a certain point in 1960,